I'm building a brand new app for the first time in four years and I'm really excited about this. It is a bucket list app where you can easily create, organize and manage your bucket list items and it is called Bucketize. And before I show you the app, let me give you a quick overview of how I came up with this genius idea. To be, <laughs> to be honest, I've always wanted to build this app because I personally take my bucket list very seriously. And every year I try to at least achieve one big thing that kind of pushes me forward in life. Even though it doesn't happen every year, I do like having an idea of everything that I want to do in life all in one place where I can just, you know, wake up every day, look at them and kind of daydream about it. And that is all I'm going to say for now. So let's dive in. All right. So here is the app. We click on it it opens up it is called bucketize this is the onboarding process the onboarding flow as you can see i only have two pages of onboarding which is not a lot but i will definitely be adding more you know as the app gets bigger and gets more features added to it so this is the first page it says welcome to bucketize the second one is basically a definition of the app and things you can do and if you swipe one more time you would actually hit a pay paywall. Showing a paywall after the onboarding flow helps you improve, what is it called, what is it called? Uh, conversion. That is what a lot of indie developers say, and I just wanted to try it out. You can get the monthly subscription, which is $2.99 for a month, or you can get the annual one for $29.99. As you can see in here, there's an X at the top right, so it is not a hard paywall. You can just close it. Unfortunately, you cannot create or sign in with an email or password in this app. I just want to see if I can get away with basically Google and Apple sign in on both platforms. But yeah, this, uh, the email and password sign in are for uh, the App Store testing. They need to be able to log in. But yeah, that is it. So right now I'm going to log in with my Apple account, which I already have an account. So it's not going to, you know, put me through the sign up process. But yeah, this is what it looks like. And um, if I go to my profile in here, you can see that I already have a profile. But this is the profile page. I don't really like it because I don't know, it doesn't look right, which I'm working on right now, actually. Oh, yeah, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, this is the test flight release build. So I have the app on my phone. I'm the only user and I want to test it to see that there are no glaring bugs. There are no big issues before I make another video, an announcement video telling everyone that the app is available to everyone. And uh, one more thing, this is actually built with Flutter. So I can have, I can build an Android and iOS app, but I opted in for iOS at the moment because I was having a lot of problems with a Google sign in on the Android phone. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to deal with this right now. So I'm just going to go iOS only. And maybe maybe in a month or two, I can actually add uh, I can add the Android Android version later on. With that out of the way, let's, let's dive in. So in here, as you can see, you don't have any buckets. And a bucket is basically a... Uh, so the way I see it is I can have a family bucket where I can, you know, put in everything that I want to do with my wife, with my two kids. Maybe I want to take him on a cruise, which actually I have planned out for this year. And I also want to take him basically go see every continent. I can add those to my family bucket. I can also have a solo bucket. In my actual bucket list, I want to go... I want to go to Antarctica, go see the South Pole. Yeah, you can't take the kids with you on a trip like that. But anyway, uh, let's create our first bucket. And I want to create... Okay, by the way, uh, you can choose a stock image or a photo library from your photo library. I'm not going to do that. I got a lot of uh, personal photo photos that I don't want to show. But we will go with the stock images, which I'm actually using at Splash and Splash.com. So I'm going to look for Grand Canyon. Scroll down. Yep. I uh, will go with the horseshoe with the horseshoe bend, which I have actually been to in uh, 2017, I think. Yeah, it was 2017 when I went there. So let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna name it Visit Grand Canyon, and the description can be anything. It is gonna be epic because it is. If you live in America, you you have to go see the Grand Canyon. You cannot be an American and not see it that's just my opinion anyway if we scroll down here we can actually select a category okay before we move ahead i'm using subapace.com from my back end it is an open source firebase alternative 
which uses uh, Postgres database. It is amazing, actually, it does work. And they have a Flutter SDK that is really well built. You can do all kinds of queries on there. You can do all kinds of filtering on there. It is amazing and I love it. And I think I did actually, I made the right choice going with them over Firebase. So when it comes to building Flutter apps, everyone knows that you, by default, you go with Google Firebase as a back end. But I wanted to try out every single alternative for all these Google products, which is why I'm going with Superbase as my backend and instead of Firebase and Firestore. And I'm also using posthog.com as my analytics. And I'm also using RevenueCat to process in-app subscriptions and show the paywall that you guys have seen earlier. Anyway, so back to the category. The category is actually driven by the backend. So I can go there and change any of these labels from the backend. Everyone will be able to get it. So it's not hard coding. I wanted to basically have as much data as I can driven by the backend. So the app doesn't really have anything hard coded. I want to be able to add different categories on the fly without having to go to push an update to the app. And I also have something else called activity use, which is also, which is also driven by, you know, driven by the backend. Anyway, so uh, the Grand Canyon, we are going to label it travel. So we click on there, as you can see, it is added. I need to improve this uh, UI. It is a list tile for now, but we are going to go with it. So we click save. And now we have our first bucket. So in here, if you click on it, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is what it looks like right now. So it has this thing called resources. A resource is basically an external link, a link to a YouTube video, an article, a link to a TikTok video, an Instagram reel, Facebook video, anything basically, any external link. So if I if I go to YouTube and I search for Grand Canyon with the history, so if I click on here, share, copy link, and I go back to the app, I can paste the link here, add it. And as you can see in here that it is able to extract, like I said, thumbnail, uh, the title and the channel, and you can add all kinds of external resources in here. Anyway, it is a simple layout. Uh, so if you click on travel, you're actually able to, uh, to change travel to faith if you want to do that. So anyway, you can also delete the bucket and you can also edit. So if I want to go grab a different, uh, a different image for the Grand Canyon and uh, yeah this one looks majestic and updated it will be reflected immediately and I can, also, I can also add items so an item can also be a task or a goal and again these naming schemes are not final because I'm still using the app so uh, if if it doesn't really make sense to me I will go back and change it visit horseshoe bend it is so beautiful you can't skip on it or it can be anything and also so the activity can be a you know if it is a bus ride if it is hiking if it is taking a flight if it is sightseeing but this one is going to be basically a sightseeing because that is what we are going to do so we click add and now it is added so now we have we have our first bucket and we have you know it has a resource added to it and we also have uh, our first bucket item if we click on it in here and it's going to take you to the bucket list screen here anyway so you can go back here and you can swipe right and you know mark it as done basically if you if you went to the horseshoe bend horseshoe bend you can mark it as done basically you did it but anyway so that is i think this is pretty much it i'm not going to show you the profile because it's not really it's not it's kind of ugly i'm not i'm not finished with it but yeah anyway this is the settings page profile you know and you can always email me if you have a feature request and you can also log out get back here go through the whole process again anyway that is all for today thank you very much and i'll see you next time